Welcome to Tell Us Why, a podcast for the financial freedom community. If you're looking to succeed in your quest for financial freedom, make sure you join us every week as we, along with our guests, discuss different stories of success, how they were achieved, and how you can do the same. And of course, we ask them to tell us why. Here are your hosts, Jack and Mike. Welcome to the Tell Us Why podcast. I'm your host, Jack Denerpel, here alongside my co-host, Mr. Michael Ketchin. Today, we are talking to Sam Horton. Sam is a full-time realtor and investor at Boston Connect Real Estate. Sam's real estate journey began in 2012 when he worked for a real estate valuation company before eventually making the change to real estate sales. Initially starting out in residential con- consumer sales, after reading books such as The 4-Hour Workweek and Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he had a mindset pivot and began to focus to helping to build value through real estate investing with his clients. Sam is proud to have helped over 80 clients pursue their real estate goals, all while actively trying to build his own portfolio. Sam resides in the South Shore area of Massachusetts and co-hosts a local monthly real estate investor meetup. But before we get to Sam's episode, Mike, what's going on in the business? Hey, yeah, man, crazy things. Had a- uh, Nothing, had a no big deal. No big deal, MBD. I don't want to touch on that one yet, but I actually closed a four unit and it goes to show in this business. I'll tell everybody, sometimes the things you think will be singles end up home runs. And sometimes you think the things that will be home runs end up singles. Yeah. Uh, sold a four unit for a record price per door in a market. So we're pretty, pretty pumped, pretty excited over that. And that was great. And now just transition to bigger and better things. And yeah. uh, cannot wait to share this great episode. What do you got going on? Oh, well, I love how we keep getting emails of your properties for sale. I'm like, oh yeah, there's, there's that one. Okay, cool. Like selling that one too? Nice. All right. <laughs> more money, more problems, you yeah. know? But uh, what do you got cooking? Uh, I mean, I think we're making it official. Carrie, uh, Carrie has her first Airbnb under contract. She's uh, got her 1124 properties email. So we're making that trans- transition. We're in full full go. And Sam, our guest is a big part of that. So, uh, Carrie is working with Sam to close her final deal. I think we got two weeks left until that closes, but, uh, making the preparations to get Airbnb ready for the beach season. So that's pretty exciting, but, uh, like what you think about this episode, man, all around great, just a, a great guy, great energy, great actionable tips. Someone who's seen the industry in multiple different lenses. So make sure you tune in for that part where he gets into, how he got started in the business, how he's progressed, where he's at, and some really, really good tips around mindset and a couple of the tips and tricks for, for maintaining a balance and, and, and productivity. Yeah. I mean, I really love how he talks about like his, his businesses. Like he, I, when I first met him two or three years ago, like he was heavy into the wholesale game. And like, that's a, that's a hard place to like, people always advocate in real oh, yeah. estate, getting into wholesale, wholesale deals. Yeah. Wholesale deals. Yeah. I remember we tried that. That sucked. That was a pain in the yes. ass, but he's talking about how failure failure has helped them along the way. Like failure is painful, but you learn more from failure than you do from your successes sometimes, which I horribly articulate, but, uh, yes. Fast forward <laughs> to that part, if nothing else. So before we give away the whole episode, that, right? Yeah. Let's get into this great episode. No producer. Jake is not editing. That. He's going to leave all your bumbles in there, <laughs> but let's hear this week's episode. To tell us why podcast is brought to you by let's do it. Are you sick of being treated like just another number by large insurance companies? Do you want a more personalized experience with somebody that you can trust? With Keith Monteith, that's exactly what you'll get. Keith is an experienced professional who can design an insurance plan tailored to fit your specific needs. With access to over 30 insurance carriers, Keith is able to shop numerous markets to find a price that works for you. So if you want an insurance agent that you can rely on and one that has your best interest at heart, then call or text Keith today on 978-241-2363. That's 978-241-2363. Keith Monty, he'll get you covered. Okay, so as we touched on in the introduction, Sam, Christian Curran, who will be on in a couple of weeks actually, and myself from the South Shore Real Estate Investor Meetup. Um, You can check out the Tell Us Why community forum, which can be found at tellusywhypodcast.com for the next monthly event. This used to be run by Christian and myself during COVID, but as time changed, we needed a place to go. Sam hopped in and uh, apparently now he gets to put his name on the banner and uh, act like he runs a show, I guess. So Sam, welcome to the Tell Us Why podcast. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Super pumped. I've been listening to you guys for a while and it's an honor to be on the show with you. Honor. Well, Sam, I, I have to ask, 
what were you thinking spending time once a month with this guy? I have to talk to him That's on a Zoom good- meeting, but I've had enough. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, but Jack is, believe it or not, at least in my opinion, a wealth of knowledge because he's been through a lot more than I have. So at least being able to pick his brain on certain things, that has certainly helped a lot. So it's it's kind of edged out that, you know, <laughs> dealing with Jack thing. This and is going to be fun. Are, I can't wait for this episode. For those of you who just tuned in, you can tell Sam is in some kind of sales by that very political answer. So, <laughs> yeah. yep. Sam, uh, why, don't, why don't we jump right into it? Why don't you tell a little bit about the people, uh, the people listening at home, where you're at um, in your journey today as an entrepreneur and specifically in real estate, where are you at today in your business? So uh, I've been in real estate as an industry for like about 10 years. Um, I started in appraisal management. So I worked for um, appraisal management companies. So I worked on valuing properties for about two years where I valued about 40,000 properties. Um, And then I didn't want to kind of sit there and value properties all day long. I was a very personable person. I like to go out, meet people, network, Um, so I got the sales license and then I've been in real estate sales for about eight years since. Um, and I would say probably about three years ago, I made like the mental switch to get more into real estate investing and working with those similar like minds, um, in that capacity. Um, and then I guess outside of that, personally, uh, I got engaged, uh, in October. So that's, uh, on the personal side of things where I'm at. Um, but yeah, that's, and, uh, I'm buying my second multifamily right now. I'm supposed to close in a week. So I love it. So a little bit all, all over the map. So all over the map. Yeah. Jack, lots of de- lots of decompress there. So I'll have to uh, talk to Jake, but I don't think think either of us got to save the date yet. But that's all right. We'll we'll move on. No big deal. <laughs> you know, you take take over. You know, you take over a guy's beat up. You also take his life up. You know what I mean? You guys don't make it like that. So what, what one thing I want to touch on right there is kind of unique from your journey going through it. You've done multiple different things in this space. Have those skill sets, have you noticed, has it helped you progress? Are they kind of piggybacking on each other and stacking on each other? Uh, Are there nuances through the appraisal side, through the sales side, now through the investing side that have helped you along in your journey? Oh, 100%. Um, And I can even go like a step further because I've started multiple businesses outside of like, that's kind of like my main track, but I've created multiple businesses off the side. One of them, I tried to do wholesaling for about a year. So like that kind of blended in with the the valuations the sales the wholesales is a different beast in my opinion um so all of that kind of through a lot of failures and a lot of experience or uh, as i would like to call it experience i've learned my lessons and figured out how to tweak things and kind of like grow my business as a result of those uh missteps yep um, now, and then, uh, well i wanted to j- touch on one thing right there real quick because i think this is very important and you said given your timeline going back about a decade now on the appraisal side, you were coming in. I mean, now it's like, you know, just printing money. You're a real estate investor. Everyone's a real estate investor. Yeah. But 10 years ago, put us back 2012, 2013, the market was just kind of starting to really cook again. And I remember hearing, I'm sure you heard at that time, oh, there's going to be a crash again. There's going to be a crash. Yeah. How much have you seen change in that decade looking at where you were at a decade ago versus now and having that mindset to keep pursuing this opportunity? Well, it's kind of funny because being on the appraisal side of things, like I, I was doing, I remember doing a report on a property in Detroit where I literally valued the house at like $1,200, like one single, a three bedroom, one bathroom, 1200 yep. square foot house at $1,200. And I'm sitting there going, what is happening? And, and most of the reports we were working on were like pre foreclosure or, you know, distressed assets for banks. Um, so just seeing some of the numbers across the state, uh, across the U.S. actually, uh, was, was impressive. Like it was just like how I, it, it took me a little bit because I was in that job for about two years. It took me a little bit to kind of conceptualize it and still pull the trigger on getting my sales license. But at that time, as you mentioned, things were starting to tick up. And over the last 10 years, we haven't seen a decline, right? It's just been yeah. going up and up and up gradually at first. And over the last year, a huge bump um, last two years, really. Um, so I think, I think for me, it was, I've always wanted to work for myself. I I never really wanted to work for someone else. And when I worked at the appraisal management company, I had, you know, 20 bosses. Um, so I've always been interested in real estate. My brother, uh, I grew up with my brother flipping houses. And so I kind of saw him take, you know, a piece of junk house and turn it into a beautiful thing and make money off it. I'm like, Oh, this is cool. And he's, you know, driving BMWs, he's got the yacht, he's got all that stuff. And I was like, I want to be like that. 
Um, so it kind of took me a while, but I think my childhood plus this job kind of propelled me into getting my license. Um, and then from there, I kind of saw the, the market change while I was in it. Um, yeah. And it was a cool, cool feeling. And it still is cool today. I, I still enjoy it. So. I think that's awesome. So I remember the early days of the Bigger Pockets podcast. Josh, Josh Dorkin used to absolutely shit on Detroit every single episode, yeah. <laughs> which made yeah. me look for in Detroit like the contrarian that I am. Like I'm gonna find a property in Detroit. It was like we were looking at properties for like five thousand dollars. Yeah, you could buy a block for five thousand yeah. dollars. I was like, I want in on that. But yeah, it's, it's uh, I know crazy. we talked about. Back. What's that? Detroit has come back too, which is the funniest yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, I should. We should have. Exactly. I should have. Should have yeah, bought that block sure. for five grand. See what happens. Like <laughs> at that time, I didn't have five grand, so it was a huge risk. But <laughs> but uh, well, neither did I, and that's what I was thinking in the same moment. I'm like, can I buy this house for fifteen hundred bucks? Like that's you know maybe a week week's worth of work at the time, and I can just you know buy it and see what happens. And what's worst yeah. case scenario? I lose fifteen hundred bucks. Like okay, yeah. you know what's bad. funny. It, to touch on that, Jack, I know you had something to, to piggyback on it because I can tell all three of us on the call have shifted. It's amazing when you first start, how you're like, oh my God, I can't do it to, when you make that mental shift to not, I can't do it to how can I do it? Yeah. How now yeah. it's just like, there's no opportunity you can't conceptualize, but you have to flip that mental switch. Yeah. Right. Found, all yeah. three of us, you know, independently successful now, but we can look back to our real estate journey. I mean, the last few years have been nutty because I don't think you could lose money on anything unless you royally screwed up. Um, right. But it, it's just, it's it just, it's fa it's fascinating to me how, when you make that mental shift, but that, that was a great point for both you guys, but go ahead, Jack. I know you had something. Oh, you're right. I mean, it is an absolute, just a mental shift. And like, like one of those things, like money, like you think money is like this finite resource. Once you realize that money is infinite, like there's so much money out there. If you just ask, like a lot of people that I've been talking to lately, like, oh, I don't have enough money to do this deal or this deal. I'm like, well, how many people have you asked? Mm -hmm. like, I remember my first time you giving me a ton of shit for it. Just be like, oh, who have you asked? Well, like, I was like, ah. Uh, no one my wife <laughs> She's like, so then you're like well ask two people this week and i was like yeah okay in the, in the mastermind oh like, yeah I'll, I'll ask two people and the next the next week we have the meetup everybody's on there who's how many people did you ask no one like ask someone like if we don't <laughs> you're not you're not invited back if you don't ask some, two people this week and i asked two people and they both said yes and i was like uh what yeah, and like yeah, once you get over that hurdle like people love making money. I mean, you go to work to make money. If you can make money with not doing anything, hundred percent passive income, people are going to be into that. So, uh, okay. Going back to, uh, the lifestyle design, Sam, what you mentioned, um, and working for yourself. I know we talked about it at a couple of the meetups, um, being an agent, being an investor. I know you can work on your old schedule. We've talked about that quite a bit. Do you want to uh, touch on that for a minute? Uh, so like just having the flexibility kind of yeah, in yeah, your own yeah. space. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, th that's like kind of one of the biggest uh, reasons why I got into real estate sales. And I mean, realistically, I could have went down a few different paths because I, I mean, if you want to go back, back, like I started selling iced tea on my neighborhood block, like every single day <laughs> during the summer. Like that was like, I, my yeah, friends would be like there. in the pool. Yeah. Like literally in the pool, like whatever, doing, you know, throwing the football around and I'm out front, like, Hey, 25 cents for a cup, 25 over here. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, I think, um, I think like having that freedom and always choosing to work for myself, I did work for a few companies. I worked for state street and I worked for the appraisal management company for a few years. Um, but outside of that, I've always kind of done my own thing. Um, and just being able to, in a sense, choose who I want to work with, um, choose how I want to spend my time is super important to me. And that said, I mean, I'm always on my phone. I'm always answering my phone. I'm always sending text messages, but like, if I get overwhelmed and I, you know, need an hour, I can do that. I can step aside. I can go for a walk. I can, you know, meditate, whatever it is to kind of get my headspace back and in, in to where it needs to be. And I think that's um, super important for me. It may not be for everyone. I mean, the, the, the downside of that is I, I'm only as good as my last sale. Right. And it's, it's kind of like, um, I've heard the comparison in bigger pockets where um, flippers, uh, it's a business, right? So you have to, you know, you're only because your last flip, you have to find the next one, you have to work on it, you have to sell it. And then um, real estate sales is the same way. It's kind of, you're only as good as the last sale you did and, and as hard as you're willing to work for the next one. Um, so it, to me, it, it's a motivator um, because it's my freedom. And then it's also 
I push harder, I'll make more money and then hopefully achieve my goals down the road. Yeah. And, and I want to go back to something that you touched on, Sam, a little story from your past. You know, we've kind of romanticized the last, I don't know, I'll say decade um, entrepreneurship. Uh, but it sounds like prior to that, you kind of had that entrepreneurial spirit and that drive. Taking an unconventional path and taking those different things, what was traditional education in school like for you going through that experience? Because I know someone who struggled with it. It sounds like we might have a, some similar personalities. Oh, but, um, oh yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe a story or, or something on that coming up that was an influential <laughs> moment on where you are today. Um, I would say school-wise, I always, I always struggled in school. Um, I did really well in certain classes and terrible in most of my classes. Did you ever want you to um, talk and bullshit through, I'm sure? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's exactly what it was. And I was a very much a, I was a people pleaser. So I would, uh, you know, if I got on good terms with my teacher, I'll give you an example, actually, uh, the best example I can give. Um, I took French for, I think, six years. So junior mm -hmm. high into high school, uh, excuse me, five years, uh, two years in junior high and three years in high school. And my, my junior year, the final year, my French teacher said, listen, I don't want you to come back. And she's like, I can't tell you not to come back. But if you come back, I will give you an honest grade. And I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want an honest grade. She, she basically <laughs> gave me like a B minus every single semester because she liked me. So yeah. like that would be like a prime example of one of the classes that, you know, I just, I formed a good relationship with the teacher. I was, you know, um, I was a very personable person. So she, she liked me in the class, but she was just like, don't come back next year or you're going to get the real grade. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I don't want the real grade. I won't come back. Like, so I think I took two gym classes that my senior year as a result. Um, that's awesome. So that's, that's kind of my, my school. I was always thinking of, business ideas I was I was kind of the ADD mind like I was just they'd be teaching me something on the board and I'd have three pages of notebooks filled up like trying to figure out how I can create some side money or a side hustle or anything at the time really yeah I uh I don't know if I've ever shared this story of the podcast but it's funny I just I don't know what made me click to know you get it but I don't even know Jack knows this I was the same way in high school I was so bad that all the teachers and the dean of my high school got together and we had a meeting at the end of my sophomore year, going to my junior year. And for the last two years, it was, we will pass you with a C in every class. You don't have to go to any more classes. You just have to stay out of trouble and you have to compile. And it, looking back on it, the guy was genius when he did the Dean, but it's super influential. I didn't realize at the time. So I went to a trade school where all the local towns had stakeholders in this quarterly meeting. I had to go around to all the stakeholders and do interviews. And I had to compile this report and then I had to present it every quarter to all the stakeholders of the school. And then I started going to like four lunches a day and I started doing, but I started navigating the waters and I had just worn down, my mother was so pissed. I had just exhausted this whole school system. And, uh, but it worked out and it ended up being one of those things. And I, I ran into that, that administrator years later cause he was a motorcycle guy. My, my stepfather's family owned a motorcycle shop. And he goes, I just knew you could talk and I knew you were too stubborn to listen, but you weren't a bad person. I just had to put you in a position that let everyone win. And um, yeah, it, it was incredible. But I mean, it was just so funny. I, I could just tell the way you said it, the way you answered with that, that young entrepreneurial spirit. I was, yeah, ADD brains is definitely the best way to put it, man. So <laughs> and like that's it. a great, that's a great Dean to your point, because like, that's a, such an outside of the box solution to yep. you as a problem to them. Right. And, and it also taught you, right. It taught you a lesson in the, in the end. And it kind of gave you some experience as to how to handle people and, and, you know, interview people and form reports and, you know, give you that structure for a business, so to speak. Well, one traditional like education. One I, love, I love it. Yeah. And uh, so as you were saying those other things, I know, um, you know, it sounds like uh, you got a lot going on. How are you managing the work-life balance? What is, what is the why? What is the point of all of this when you're doing all these hustles and running around on the phone 80 hours a week? Yeah. What what is your motivation for doing all this and taking this unconventional path? I was going to say, what's work life about? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, I, I created so I just came back from Colorado. Um, and so that was like an example of me taking some time to just kind of get away with some few friends, a few friends and my uh, fiance. So that was fun. Um, and uh, I would say my why I have kind of two whys right now. And I, I think why's are interesting because for me, they, they change, right? Like it's, it's not always the same why at least mm -hmm. um, maybe one of them has stayed the same for me and that would be working for myself. Um, I just like, 
uh, similar to your point earlier, I don't like listening to people. I like figuring things out on my own and learning the hard way and then getting better as a result. Um, and sometimes that's very painful um, as I've learned through the years. Uh, and sometimes it works out great. Um, and then my other kind of why would be uh, my fiance. So uh, I, I consider myself a very hard worker, but I think she's even more than me and she's in real estate sales too. So I think I'd love to get to a place where I can get a, create enough passive income, uh, whether through businesses or real estate investing, um, that I can let her, you know, she can do whatever she wants to do, whatever, it doesn't matter. And I want to kind of get her out of the sales because I think she's getting a little tired of it. She's been in it for about 11 years. So I think those are my two whys yeah. as it stands currently. I think the one thing, the most powerful thing you said there is like the failure is, is painful, but like you learn the most from failure. People avoid failure like the plague, but if you get out and risk it a couple of times, you'll learn 10 more, 10 times more than like reading a book or, or watching a YouTube video. If you get out there and actually do it, you'll learn from your failure and failure, I would argue is more informative you learn more than like than a win like if you do something and you win it's easy like winning a game or winning a, a deal or something like that it's not always the best case scenario for you like you're in some instances instances are better off failing. well not better off failing but you learn more from failing than you do or you can be better off from failing definitely um and i think that's underrated like people avoid risk from like the plague and so like Get out right. there and risk it sometimes. You might be. Might you, be you were making a great point. I was just laughing because you were arguing and debating with yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> the was on the podcast. I was like, that's a very unique skill. That was. That's how my brain works. Like, Go back the and duality. listen. I, 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 logic from both sides. I, I'm going to jump in here. Even I was wondering, do you need us for this conversation? You should Jake, everybody. Uh, good, good luck editing that one. But no, to, to Jack's point, because it was a good one, and to Sam's point, and if anyone listening at home, you can see, it's kind of funny we talk about, right? And tell us why. All the common themes from people just starting to people who've got net worth, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. We always do take the lessons and the failures because I think they sting more, right? Like you have success. And as you progress, we talk about all the time, money's a weak motivator and blah, blah, blah. It's lifestyle design. When we get uncomfortable is when we truly grow. And a lot of times uncomfortableness comes from failure. It comes from the unknown. It comes from pushing. So if you hurry up and fail, like they like to say, you're going to be a lot closer to your success. But that fear of people letting go, that fear of taking that risk, the fear of, you know, being Jack and asking for money. Now it's not a problem. But yeah, the guy was crippled by fear getting going. Fear of myself when we were getting going, trying to figure out, I mean, our general contractor on our first job, on our very first deal, we had to bail him out of jail and fire him 30 days into the project for shooting guns in the woods, like <laughs> next to an elementary school. Like, it's going to be okay. You're going to be next all right. Next to an elementary school. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> he, may, he may not be like, all right. But we were just saying that in my head. I'm like, why is that illegal? Actually, why is that, what's wrong with that? Regrettably, he's actually since passed away because he was uh -oh. drug overdose or something else. But, you know, it was, uh, you learn these things. You go through adversity. So Sam, very well said. Um, and like I said, I think that's a perfect segue and a question we ask every guest every week, um, speaking of everything you've touched on, what is one book or resource you would recommend to the Tell Us Why community? So I, I actually, I, I sent Jake two. Um, the one that, one, one book and one audio book. One book that kind of helped my, my pivot, if you will, my mental shift um, was The 4-Hour Workweek uh, by Tim Ferriss. Um, and I, I think it was, it opened my mind to the idea of, outsourcing and creating systems within businesses mm -hmm. and as soon as I read that book like it it literally I had a system for my business but like I I redid my whole entire system after reading that book and it just taught me that you know once you figure out the process you can create a, a task list just like in flipping or anything right you can create a yep. task list that you can follow and it just, it changed like the way I looked at everything. And then the outsourcing aspect, same thing. Like I, I now have an assistant um, and like he references outsourcing for different pieces of your business to help you focus on what you do best, right? And I think those two were my two biggest takeaways from that book. And it really, that that book made me jump into bigger pockets, made me re read Rich Dad Poor Dad and made me like kind of go into more. Um, so I think that was that was a big one for me. And then uh, the audiobook, 
uh, and let me preface this, I'm not a Matthew McConaughey uh, fanboy, but the audiobook Green Lights is, in my opinion, phenomenal. It's like, it, you get to listen to the audiobook because he does it himself, and it's, he talks about his life journey and his mistakes, and, um, and it's just a really cool, it's like unconventional wisdom throughout, and it's, it's a really cool listen, and I really enjoyed it. I wasn't expecting anything from it, um, but I really enjoyed it. I have heard great things about that book. Have you really? It's I, worth, I was excited when you said it. I haven't. I hadn't. I hadn't heard about it since he wrote it. So yeah. I was like, oh, I wonder why he chose that. Such an unconventional one. So I'll, I'll check that one out for sure. So that was a great recommendation. That one, and then I think you just finished reading or listening to "Can't Hurt Me," Goggins. Oh right? my! Listen. Yeah. There's, there's, the producer Jake isn't built for that. We can't talk about that on here. I'm get very upset. Um, Those two audio books. I already know which way he leans, so it's a little. That's uh, you gotta worry about his feelings. I'm gonna but, stab uh, you. No, I wish, I wish, I wish Jack and Jake and everybody I know would listen to that book because I, you know, I think I'm a mentally tough person, and and that that pushed me. He's just different. I mean, I don't know. A better, I don't know a better way to put it. He's just different. Different. He's hundred percent. Yes, yes. Go listen to Can't Hurt Me. Absolutely. And I'm going to check out uh, Green Lights. All right, Jack. Uh, All right, you so want to hit him with the questions? Before we move on uh -oh, you to us private else? lending, I got to plug it here. So okay. right now, I'm using both Sam and QS Private Lending to close a deal in Airbnb. Love it. So, Sarah, we from our sponsor, QS Private Lending. It's now time for the Big Three segment, brought to you by QS Private Lending. Are you looking to finance your next deal quickly and reliably with less hassle and paperwork? QS Private Lending is one of the oldest and largest hard money lenders to real estate investors in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. Our quick and simple short-term loans require no appraisals and have enabled hundreds of builders and investors to profitably acquire and renovate thousands of residential and commercial properties. To experience the QS difference for yourself, call or text Luke Conroy today at 315-323-0250. That's 315-323-0250. Five zero QS private lending. All right. So now it is time for the big three. These are the three questions we ask every guest every week, and we'll kick it off with the college question. So in your opinion, excluding doctors, lawyers, um, in your opinion, is college worth it? Uh, that's a tough question. Um, and I've heard you guys ask it several times. I've heard a few different answers. Um, I, I think it comes down to the individual. Um, I think one of your most recent episodes, you're talking about we need more trade school uh, kids. And I agree 100%. I think we have a big, we have a big gap right now with, with those trades. Um, but um, I think for, for me personally, I wish I got my real estate license sooner. I wish I got into investing sooner. And I wish I just started down that path as soon as I graduated high school. I think I would have had a bumpy road for the first couple of years and then I would have figured things out and it would have been where I'm at now, but a lot sooner. Um, and I probably would have taken a lot more risk too, because I'm starting to take more, more, more risk now, but I was always afraid of it when I was younger. And I feel like if I did just done it with no debt, I would have been fine. Um, that said, I do think that some people, especially people that aren't very social creatures, you know, I think, I think the college experience gives you at least the, uh, the, the, the opportunity to kind of go out, meet new people, experience different things. And that, that was kind of a cool takeaway for me personally, is just meeting new people, experiencing different things that I've never tried before or whatever from high school and, and earlier. Um, so that part of college I did appreciate, but overall I would say for me, no, I think I, I knew what I wanted to be an entrepreneur early on. I knew I wanted to be, you know, talking to people, selling products, whatever it is. Um, and I didn't really learn too much in college that helped me in that path, um, per se. Love it. Great answer. No, Great so answer. With people. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a so, it's a social education. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. kind of how I looked it's at funny it. Because I was thinking, I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, Tommy Friesfoss was talking about going uh, networking and things like that, talk, meeting connections and stuff like that. I don't think I've talked to a single person except for a kid that lives a town away from me since I graduated college. <laughs> someone that I went to college with. No joke. Like, I don't know if you're the social butterfly. We should be using that as an example. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> um, that, this, it, yeah. Oh, God, I'm, I'm going to get off the rails here. I got so much I can touch on with Jack and that. <laughs> but on that note, the next question, what is one piece of actionable advice you go back and give to your 18-year-old self? Um, 
have more uncomfortable conversations. I think that's what I would tell myself. Um, kind of going, touching on what we talked about earlier, getting in the uncomfortable zone, if you will, or, um, or getting out of your comfort zone. Um, that I think would, would propel me into a different realm that I'm in today. Like uh, just having those awkward conversations and, and it doesn't matter if you don't know the answer, if you don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's just put yourself yeah. out there and, and you'll find out. Um, I think that would be one of the biggest pieces of advice I'd give myself that, and then maybe meditate more. Cause I, I have gotten into meditation lately and it has helped me, especially when I'm in like a, a spiral. If I'm just, if my phone's ringing nonstop and my head's going hundred miles an hour, taking 10 minutes just to shut it off and close my eyes. That's helped tremendously. So I think those would be like my two things. And real quick before Jack jumps into the last one, what do you use for meditation? Any recommendation, any resource? Um, so I, I kind of go back and forth between, I do the guided meditations cause I'm not super good at it right now. I kind of need the help. Um, so I use like headspace or, uh, waking up. Um, those are kind of the two apps I jump between right now. I'm using waking up. Um, it's a Sam Harris app who wrote a few books on, on this stuff. So awesome. Thank you for sharing. All right, Jack, hit him at the hard one. All right. So what is one thing you would say to your, ni- oh, wow, I already messed that up. What is one thing you'd <laughs> want your 90 year old self to say to you? <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just laughing at everyone's face. Like, oh God. <laughs> um, honestly, uh, maybe it's a little lame, but I, I would hope I'd say I'm proud of you. You know, uh, proud of what you've done, what you've accomplished, and 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 I hope that you left everything on the table. That's awesome. I like Very it. Well said. Where can uh, where can people get in touch and learn more about you, Sam? Sure. Um, so you can always email me at my at Sam period Horton at bostonconnect.com. Um, you can call or call me direct or text me anytime 781-789-8366. Um, and then I have a website www.samhortonrealty.com. That is going to be uh, redone over the next couple of weeks. So I'll have a new website soon. But right now it's not that great. <laughs> All right. Um, so before we let you go, is there anything else you'd like to tell the listeners? Um, I, from my perspective, uh, if you're interested in getting into real estate in any capacity or real estate investing for that matter, like start going to networking groups. I mean, I know it's a little biased since Jack and I host one, um, but like get out there and meet people because I don't think. I would be where I'm at today if I didn't start having conversations with people that do it every single day um, and just and just seeing them in person, not just watching it on YouTube and trying to take down notes, like having those real conversations, getting into those awkward conversations, you know, putting yourself out there. Um, I think that is a huge step for anyone willing and, you know, wanting to get into this industry. I think that was great advice. Jack, where can people learn more about the Tell Us Why uh, community podcast? We can check us out at tellusswhypodcast.com. Um, check out our new community forum. Uh, if you don't already follow us on social media, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. Every platform there is, even TikTok, we're out there. All the links are in the description below. Yeah, and please check us out on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast. Download, subscribe, leading a rating and review. It is a huge help. Jack, quote of the week. So this one's a big F you to Sam because in his intro, <laughs> he tried to screw me up throwing words like Worcestershire and a bunch of complicated phrasings to try to mess with me. So when I go read that now, I try to mess me up. But uh, studies find the three most stressful moments in people's lives are death, divorce, and properly pronouncing Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> That's Tony Shea. <laughs> so F you, Sam. Good night. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you for checking out the Tell Us Why podcast. Uh, tune in every week. And again, check us out wherever you get your podcasts. And Jack, a little role reversal. Until then, bet on yourself. <laughs> <laughs>